Hello everyone, I'm back with what will probably be the last video on Avas for now. Uh, so in the previous videos, we've seen how we can post-process the model, run it. Uh, now we're going to go through post-processing. Let's go. Okay, so just as a reminder, this is the model that we have been working on. This is a model of a vehicle with a Neva speaker at the front. We have computed transfer functions from this source here to all the different microphones. Now we want to post-process these results. In order to do so, we'll go here to the workflow manager. This is a space where we have a lot of different verticals for different applications. And of course, in this case, we're going to select the AVAS vertical. I'm not going to go through all the setup here. Um, I want to focus on just showing you what's inside. So I'm going to open one instance that is already um, populated. And as you can see, there are different tabs that are guiding the users through the different steps. So in the first step, what we want is to define the sources that we want to use, so the actual sound uh, that we want to produce. In this case, uh, we have a very, very simple sound, uh, which is essentially two tones that will um, go higher and higher in frequency as the speed of the vehicle increases. So we can define um, sources uh, depending on speed, depending on the RPM of the vehicle, or just depending on time. We can just have a, a sound file uh, looping through. The next step is to define the transfer functions. Uh, in this case, we have computed the transfer functions from the simulation. So we can just take the results from the simulation we just ran. We will have all the transfer functions between the source uh, location that we have defined and all the different AVAS microphones. So that's is going to be directly integrated in the, in the workflow. We have the different tracks. The different tracks are automatically populated according to what's in the norm, but of course we can modify it if we want to. And what we're defining here is how is the evolution of the speed of the vehicle or uh, the distance in the test zone as we're um, running the different tests for the different what we call track configurations. So reverse drive, reverse st stationary, uh, forward drive at different speeds. The next tab, vehicles, is essentially where we put everything together. So for each of the tracks, we'll define what is the source we want to use and what is the set of transfer functions we want to use. Again, here it's all pre-populated because we have run the simulation and we have indicated that we wanted to pass by post-processing. And in this case, we have only one single source, but in a more realistic case, we may have different sound files for the different uh, track conditions. So this is where we are going to be able to match the different sources with the different transfer functions. Um, as you can see here, we see how the transfer function evolves versus the vehicle position and versus the frequency we are looking at. Uh, and obviously, we are seeing some interference pattern uh, that are developing here. So here, I've done it for all the different uh, track configurations. Then we can go into vehicle analysis. Uh, vehicle analysis is where we can see uh, the sources times transfer functions for each of the tracks. So here I'm looking at the four drive case. And what I can see is that, OK, obviously I have my two peaks uh, that are defined by the speed of the vehicle. And you can see that as I'm going through the test zone, uh, I have some variation in terms of the level. So I have some places where the level is very low and then some places where a level becomes extremely, I mean, much higher. And this is because the transfer functions, as we've seen before, uh, will change as the vehicle goes through the test. So we can um, check all of this uh, for the different uh, vehicle configuration. And then finally, what's most important is we can check the compliance of our configuration to the standards. So with the European standards and the US standards. Um, European standard, as you can see here, I have a minimum sound pressure level and a maximum sound pressure level I need to meet for different configurations. And you can see the cases for which I'm passed and the cases for which I'm not passed. Here, we are looking at the forward drive at 10 kilometers per hour. We can see that the overall sound pressure level through the test zone is staying, is staying way be, uh, behind, between sorry, the minimum and the maximum level. We are good here. That's why we are passed. Um, 
For another configuration, for example, for the 20 kilometers per hour configuration, what we can see is that um, here the sound pressure level goes slightly below our uh, safety margin, let's say, and then here it goes way above uh, the safety margin and even the, the actual uh, regulation limit. So this uh, tells us that we need to work in uh, probably changing the sound file or uh, trying to find some alternative configurations for the speaker that will make this uh, certification test pass. So that's the case for the European standard and of course also for the American standard. And what we've wanted with this tool is to give the ability to quickly check uh, the compliance uh, for a specific configuration to the different uh, standards that exist. So I hope it's useful. Uh, it's very simple and, and short demo. Uh, if you want to learn more, don't hesitate to contact us and uh, we'll be happy to demo that in more details to you. All right, bye-bye.